Uh, Julia, the other cookies um, did arrive. Uh, Gwen brought them to me yesterday and I let the dogs try them last night. Uh, particularly Shayna, who only has four canines and doesn't have any teeth. And she had, I broke her off a small piece. She had no problem with it and everybody loved it. And I tasted them uh, and they're good. Um, they just don't have sugar, but I don't like sugar. So yay. Um, so that brings up a good point. Uh, when you buy a treat or food for your pets, would you be willing to eat it yourself? Because if you're willing to eat it yourself, then you found a good product. So when I get something that is clearly human grade, everything organic, I have no problem with eating it. I will eat all provide pet food. Um, I would eat answers because it's all human grade, but the fermentation, I'm not sure if I would like the taste and I don't like goat anything. So not trying that. Uh, but um, you really uh, need to think about things really critically. So when you're buying something, think about, would I put that in my system? Would I be willing to feed that to my kids? If you're willing to feed it to your kids, then yay, perfect food. Okay, so yesterday, um, yeah, uh, that's why I'm gonna talk about what we talked about yesterday because I know that the system froze. I think if you go back and watch them later in like if you go to the feed and watch them later, um, the, the freeze takes care of itself, but I don't know. Cause I haven't gone back to try to do it. So, um, I was talking about how you can determine whether your pet has food intolerances and food allergies, because I did a consultation where she did, uh, some great testing with her own dog, which she thought her dog was allergic to beef. So she took away everything else and fed the dog, uh, a beef meal only for four days and the dog had screaming, raging diarrhea. And she said, well, clearly that doesn't work for him. Great test. Um, it's, uh, a little disturbing when you're going through those tests sometimes. Uh, then she, she's got the dog on a diet. It's, it's, it's a restricted diet, but it is working for the dog at the moment. So she's been trying to add things in one at a time. And when she got to sardines, uh, on, you know, second, third, fourth day in whatever the dog broke out in incredible hives all down one side of its body in the ear. Um, and she said, Ooh, I think that's a problem too. So she added that to her. I don't think I should feed this list. Um, and now we're waiting for all those sores and scabs from the hives to heal, uh, in order to really, 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 um, confirm that test, you would get the dog back to normal, clear up the hives, clear up the itchy allergy problem, clear up the diarrhea, and then reintroduce a second time just to get a confirmation that it didn't work. And I know that can be a little troubling. Uh, you know, if you're like, man, do I want to go through diarrhea again? Do I want my dog to have to go through being that itchy again? Uh, but that's the true way to confirm because especially with an allergic outbreak with hives, could this is a dog with a lot of allergies anyway could the dog have been exposed to something else now this is a great time of year to do those sorts of tests because there's really well for us things are starting to bloom but if you're up north where things are still frozen tundra um which i believe that dog is uh you know that's a great time to do these tests because they're not going to be exposed to trees and pollens and weeds and grasses outside um so it's it's um it's, it's, a, it's a good way to do it. It just takes a long time if you think about all the different ingredients that you might want to have in your pet's food. Or if you're buying a commercial diet, good luck finding. Uh, there's a couple of companies that do prey model raw, so they're they're very restricted and don't have a lot of ingredients. But otherwise, you're, you're going to pick up foods that have 10, 15, 20 ingredients. And if you're trying to do this with dry kibble or foods that have synthetic vitamin mineral mixes added in, it's going to be really difficult because there's a lot of things that the, that the pet could react to. And this goes for dogs and cats. And synthetic vitamin mineral mixes are just that, they're synthetic. And when you put something that's man-made into the body, the body says, oh, that's a foreign invader. I have to go attack that. And if the body is in that state of hyperinflammation, hyper immune response, that's when you're going to get these allergic problems. So 
when you're a lot of times for people who say, well, you know, I was feeding a beef based kibble and my dog was having vomiting, diarrhea, regurge. So I switched to a chicken based kibble. He still got vomiting, diarrhea, regurge. Then I switched to a fish, fish based kibble. He's still got the same problems. It may not be the protein that the dog is reacting to. It may be a vitamin mineral mix. It may be a secondary ingredient in there, especially with kibble. We're going to have peas, legumes, potatoes, grains, pick, Pick your bind, whatever is going to bind that, whatever carb, starchy carb they're using to bind that food together, could be that, could be the vitamins, could be the minerals, could be anything in there. And that's why uh, just switching brands of kibble is commonly filled with all kinds of problems and you don't solve the problem. I call that a lateral move. It's sort of just moving from one thing to another thing in the same category and not really changing the diet. So that's why very commonly when I take these pets and I, I say, okay, well, we're not going to feed them dry kibble anymore. We're going to switch them over to a gently cooked or a raw food diet with no synthetics in it. And the dog is instantly cured or the cat's instantly cured. I'm not a miracle worker. I just got rid of all the things that their body is reacting to. So if you want to do the shortcut on, um, there's a couple of ways to do the shortcut. You find a novel protein, clean diet that the pet's never been exposed to and you feed them that and nine times out of 10, it's problem solved. Uh, the other option is you could do testing. So there's different tests that can be run. You can do the blood allergy panel called a RAST, R-A-S-T test. Uh, there's a lot of companies out there that do it. We use Spectrum and HESCA in our clinics. And I sent that to someone yesterday, links to those for their veterinarian because their veterinarian um, didn't use those and didn't feel comfortable and wanted to send the dog to a dermatologist to have the skin scratch testing done. Well, the dog's a Malinois. So to get that skin scratch testing done for allergy testing, you have to shave the whole side of the dog. So now we're going to take this beautiful coated dog and shave the whole side of the dog. And then you inject, you know, however many, 50, 100 different, um, uh, serums with the different allergens in them. So it might be oak tree, uh, maple tree, you know, birch tree, all the different trees, the weeds, the grasses, uh, carpet fibers, fleas, storage mites, dust mites, uh, and then foods that you want to test. Yeah, it's a great way to do it, but it's really expensive, really time consuming, and you are going to have a dog with complete shaved side. Um, if you ask a dermatologist, that's their preferred test. They say it's the only one they use, the only one they like, but of course it's the only one that only they can do. Uh, and, uh, it's a hefty bill. Um, and then there are other options. There are saliva tests and there are multiples on the market. Um, all of these tests can have false positives and false negatives. When I use the serum test, the blood test, I would get my results back and the cutoffs keep changing, but let's just arbitrarily say the cutoff is 100. Well, if beef comes back at 99 or 105, is that a true positive or a true negative? Yeah, it's kind of in the gray zone. I don't know. We don't know until we try it. Uh, if it comes back at 250, I'm probably going to say, you know, we probably shouldn't feed that. If it comes back at 40 to 60, I'm going to go, yeah, that's pretty good. We probably can get away with that. Let's give it a try. So I use it not as an absolute, but as a guideline. So the other testing that I was talking about when everything froze was Dr. Jean Dodds from Hemopet Lab out in California, her NutriScan test, which is a saliva test. Uh, so you order it and I think your dog gets a rope to chew on or something where we get lots of saliva in, uh, embedded into it and then you mail that in they run their testing on it and then what they're looking for is immunoglobulins which are what the immune cells are producing as um, basically antibodies against different proteins so they test grains they test meats um they test things like peas and legumes, potatoes, things that you would normally find in pet food. And then you get a report back and it gives you two different levels of immunoglobulins or sort of a short acting and a longer acting. And you get your test results back and it will say negative reaction. So they didn't, they didn't have a lot of immune globulins to that particular protein. You go, oh, that's good. Or it'll give you a weak reaction. Well, probably could still feed that might give you uh, you know, a moderate reaction. Um, and they'll usually say avoid on that. And they have a cutoff level on theirs as well. And then you'll get the strong reaction where it's like, yeah, you really need to avoid that one. Um, 
I've used that test a lot. Again, there's a little bit of interpretation with it. It is not 100% yay or nay. Uh, for instance, uh, years ago, my mom's Schnauzer Shotzi was scratching her brains out. And she was like 10 years old, uh, 12, 13 at the time. And I thought, well, man, dogs usually just don't develop allergies that late in life, especially when they've been absolutely perfect for the first 10 years. So I did everything with this dog. I did skin scrapings, tape preps, cytologies, you name it. And finally, I couldn't find anything. So I finally um, uh, did allergy testing on her. And at the time she was eating all provide mostly beef and it came back high on beef. And I said, wow, how did this dog develop a beef allergy? I mean, allergies are something that you build up over time. You get re-exposed, 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 and finally your body says, you know, I'm done with that, it's out of here. So we said, wow, she's developed a beef allergy. That's really odd, especially on a food with no synthetics. Uh, so we took her off beef and she continued to scratch and continued to scratch and continued to scratch. Well, then George started to scratch too and he spent a lot of time at mom's house at the time. Well, we had sarcoptic mange is what we had. And after we all moved in together and we had 10 scratching dogs and four scratching cats, five, I forget how many we had at the time. Uh, I went, oh, duh, and I finally found a mite. George was nice enough to give me a mite. Of course, by that time he had no hair and he looked really terrible. Uh, so I looked for six months before I found the mites on those dogs. And, you know, when you have one dog scratching, you kind of go, okay, could be an allergy. When you have 10 dogs scratching, yeah, you got something contagious. So uh, she's not allergic to beef. She ate beef all the time after that, after I said, oh, well, it's mites, it's not allergy. But her level came up high on the beef because she was eating a lot of beef. So the test said, hey, we got a, got a lot of reaction to beef here because she's eating a lot of beef. So with these tests, it's an interpretation game. Um, and that's where you might need your veterinarian to help you kind of sift through that. But I, I do love the Nutriscan test. And if you're really struggling and you want a shortcut, uh, instead of having to try every single protein, try every single grain, try every single starch, uh, it is a way to, to shortcut that. And uh, if you get something that's a, that's a bunch of negative reactions, then you can pretty safely say, okay, I'm going to make up a diet using those. So I like it. Uh, there is a link to it on our website in the store under NutriScan testing. Um, so I really like it. I would type it in, but it's not letting me type today. I'll have to get Gwen to post it again. So um, anyway, so that's kind of a rehash of yesterday. We're on our way to the farm, got to feed everybody. And uh, as usual, oh, come on. Um, busy day, but that, that's normal for us. If I wasn't, if I wasn't busy, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. How'd I treat the mange? I tried using the uh, Might Avenge dip. Went through that for about three weeks. Wasn't solving the problem. I finally resorted to a dose of ivermectin. I had to get rid of it. Um, I think I only needed one dose. It cured the problem, but the dip just wasn't doing it. it wasn't doing it. And washing that many animals every week wasn't doing it for me either. Chicken baby update. I'll have to put them in a box and bring them out. They look totally different. They're not this big anymore. <laughs> and they're making feathers. <laughs> they're very cute. <laughs> 